children, I shall read the lesson and explain it to you. A triumph of surgery. I was really worried about Tricky this time. I had pulled up my cow when I saw him in the street with his mistress and I was shocked at his appearance. He had become hugely fat like a blotted sausage with a leg at each corner. His eyes, bloodshot and rheumy, stared straight ahead and his tongue lolled from his jaws. Mrs. Pumphrey hastened to explain. He was so listless, Mr. Harriet. He seemed to have no energy. I thought he must be suffering from malnutrition. So I have been giving him some little extras between meals to build him up. Some malt and cod liver oil and a bowl of horlicks at night to make him sleep. Nothing much, really. And did you cut down on the sweet things as I told you? Children, in this part of the story, we come to know that Tricky was a dog who was pampered by his mistress, Mrs. Pumphrey. He had become very fat and was even unable to walk. His eyes had become red and rheumy. I know you might be wondering what is rheumy. Rheumy is the semi-liquid that comes out of the eyes during eye pain. In spite of this, Tricky was getting malt, cod liver oil and a bowl of horlicks from his mistress, though Dr. Harriet had asked the meals to be cut down. Oh, I did, for a bit. But he seemed to be so weak, I had to relent. He does love ice cream, cakes and chocolates, so I can't bear to refuse him. I looked down again at the little dog. That was the trouble. Tricky's only fault was greed. He had never been known to refuse food. He would tackle a meal at any hour of the day or night. And I wondered about all the things Mrs. Pumphrey hadn't mentioned. Are you giving him plenty of exercise? Well, he has his little walks with me as you can see. but. Hodgkin, the gardener, has been down with lumbago, so there has been no ring throwing lately. Now, listen to the explanation, children. Initially, she had cut down, but Tricky's love for ice cream, cakes and chocolates had forced her to continue the diet. Tricky had become so greedy that he could eat meal at any hour of the day. Dr. Harriet asked if any exercise was given to Tricky. So, Mrs. Pomfrey answered that the gardener was suffering from lumbago. Lumbago is nothing but lower back pain. So, there was no extra exercise other than a walk. Now, I shall continue to read the lesson. I tried to sound severe. Now I really mean this. If you don't cut his food right down and give him more exercise, he is going to be really ill. You must harden your heart and keep him on a very strict diet. Mrs. Pumphrey wrung her hands. Oh, I will, Mr. Harriet. I'm sure you're right. But it is so difficult, so very difficult. She set off head down along the road as if determined to put the new regime into practice immediately. Now children, listen to the explanation. Dr. Harriet was very stern now. He told her to cut down the food and give him more exercise. But Mrs. P Pumphrey said that she found it very difficult and took her pet for a walk right away. I shall continue with the lesson. I watched their progress with growing concern. Tricky was tottering along in his tw little tweed coat. He had a whole wardrobe of these coats for the cold weather and a raincoat for the wet days. He struggled on, drooping in his harness. I thought it wouldn't be long before I heard from Mrs. Pumphrey. The expected call came within a few days. Mrs. Pumphrey was distraught. Tricky would eat nothing, refused even his favorite dishes, and besides, he had bouts of vomiting. He spent all his time lying on a rug, panting, didn't want to go for walks, didn't want to do anything. I had made my plans in advance, 
the only way was to get Ricky out of the house for a period. I suggested that he be hospitalized for about a fortnight to be kept under observation. Now I shall explain this. Ricky was walking with heavy steps wearing a little tweed coat. He had many such coats. Seeing his walk, the doctor knew that he would get a call very soon from Mrs. Pumphrey. She called him as Tricky had refused to eat. He was vomiting and spent most of his time lying on a rug and breathing heavily. Doctor got a chance to get Tricky out of the house. He suggested Tricky to be hospitalized for at least 15 days and kept under observation. I shall continue to read the lesson. The poor lady almost swooned. She was sure he would pine and die if he did not see her every day. But I took a firm line. Tricky was very ill and this was the only way to save him. In fact, I thought it best to take him without delay and, followed by Mrs. Pumphrey's wailings, I marched out to the car carrying the little dog wrapped in a blanket. The entire staff was roused and maids rushed in and out bringing his day bed, his night bed, favorite cushions, toys and rubber rings, breakfast bowl, lunch bowl, supper bowl. Realizing that my car would never hold all the stuff, I started to drive away. As I moved off, Mrs. Pumphrey, with a despairing cry, threw an armful of the little coats through the window. I looked in the mirror before I turned the corner of the drive. Everybody was in tears. Now listen to the explanation, children. Mrs. Pomfrey and Tricky both were sat to part from each other. Tricky was put into doctor's car covered in a blanket. The maids rushed with all the favorite things of Tricky like cushions, toys, etc. Dr. Harriet saw that all were in tears when he drove away with Tricky. Now we move on to the lesson again children. Out on the road, I glanced down at the pathetic little animal gasping on the seat by my side. I patted the head and Tricky made a brave effort to wag his tail. Poor old lad, I said. You haven't a kick in you, but I think I know a cure for you. At the surgery, the household dog surged round me. Tricky looked down at the noisy pack with dull eyes and when put down, lay motionless on the carpet. The other dogs, after sniffing, ground him for a few seconds, decided he was an uninteresting object and ignored him. Now, listen to the explanation, children. Seeing Tricky's condition, the doctor had already decided on the treatment. At the surgery, the other dogs crowded around Dr. Harriet. Tricky looked at them with dull eyes and slept without moving. The other dogs thought that he was not active and ignored him. Now, again, shall we move on to the lesson? I made up a bed for him in a warm, loose box next to the one where the other dog slept. For two days, I kept an eye on him, giving him no food but plenty of water. At the end of the second day, he started to show some interest in his surroundings and on the third he began to whimper when he heard the dogs in the yard. When I opened the door, Tricky trotted out and was immediately engulfed by Joe, the greyhound and his friends. After rolling him over and thoroughly inspecting him, the dogs moved off down the garden. Tricky followed them, rolling slightly with his surplus fat. Later that day, I was present at feeding time. I watched while Tristan slopped the foot into the bowels. There was the usual headlong rush followed by the sounds of high speed eating. Every dog knew that if he fell behind the others, he was liable to have some competition for the last part of his meal. Now we move on to the explanation children. Tricky was treated like the other dog. For two days he was not given food. Only plenty of water was given to him. But after two days he started moving and whimpering. Then he began to play with the other dogs. When the meal was served, 
all the other dogs rushed to finish their meal Now again to the lesson children from then on his progress was rapid he had no medicinal treatment of any kind but all day he ran about with the dogs joining in their friendly scrimmages he discovered the joys of being bowled over tramped on and squashed every few minutes he became an accepted member of the gang an unlikely silky little object among the shaggy crew fighting like a tiger for a share at meal times and hunting rats in the old hen house at night he had never had such a time in his life all the while mrs pumphrey hovered anxiously in the background ringing a dozen times a day for the latest bulletins i dodged the questions about whether his cushions were being turned regularly or his correct coat worn according to the weather but i was able to tell her that the little fellow was out of danger and convalescing rapidly now the explanation children after that tricky progressed quickly he was accepted by the other dogs and he enjoyed being tramped and squashed he even fought for his meals and hunted rats meanwhile mrs pumphrey was worried and rang a dozen times to ask dr harriet about the progress of tricky he told her that there was no danger and it was recovering slowly again to the lesson children the word convalescing seemed to do something to mrs pumphrey she started to bring round fresh eggs two dozen at a time to build up tricky's strength for a happy period my partners and i had two eggs each for breakfast but when the bottles of wine began to arrive the real possibilities of the situation began to dawn on the household it was to enrich tricky's blood lunch became a ceremonial occasion with two glasses of wine before and several during the meal we could hardly believe it when the brandy came to put a final edge on tricky's constitution for a few nights the fine spirit was rolled around inhaled and reverently drunk there were days of deep content starting well with the extra egg in the morning improved and sustained by the midday wine and finishing luxuriously round the fire with the brandy now i shall explain this part of the story on hearing convalescing mrs pumphrey started sending two dozens of eggs at a time to improve tricky's strength dr harriet and the staff enjoyed the eggs for breakfast then wine was sent to enrich the blood of tricky later brandy was also sent these drinks were also enjoyed by dr harriet and his staff now again to the lesson children it was a temptation to keep tricky on as a permanent guest but i knew mrs pumphrey was suffering and after a fortnight felt compelled to phone and tell her that the little dog had recovered and was awaiting collection within minutes about 30 feet of gleaming black metal drew up outside the surgery the chauffeur opened the door and i could just make out the figure of mrs pumphrey almost lost in the interior her hands were tightly clasped in front of her her lips trembled oh mr harriet Do tell me the truth. Is he really better? Yes, he's fine. There's no need for you to get out of the car. I'll go and fetch him. I walked through the house into the garden. A mass of dogs were hurtling round and round the lawn, and in their midst, ears flapping, tail waving, 
was the go little golden figure of Tricky. Now, the explanation, children. The doctor wanted to keep Tricky forever in his clinic, but he understood the pain Mrs. Pumphrey was going through without Tricky. So, he was forced to call and inform her of Tricky's recovery. Soon, Mrs. Pumphrey arrived and wanted to fetch Tricky. Dr. Harriet stopped her and he went to do the same. Tricky was playing and having fun with the other dogs. We shall continue with the lesson. In two weeks, he had been transformed into a lithe, hard-muscled animal. He was keeping up well with the pack, stretching out in great bounds, his chest almost brushing the ground. I carried him back along the passage to the front of the house. The chopper was still holding the car door open and when Tricky saw his mistress, he took off from my arms in a tremendous leap and sailed into Mrs. Pumphrey's lap. She gave a startle, Ooh! and then had to defend herself as he swarmed over her, licking her face and barking. Now listen to the explanation, children. In two weeks now, Tricky was a hard-muzzled animal. Harriet carried him to the car. Tricky was happy to see his mistress. He jumped into the car and rested on Mrs. Pumphrey's lap. He licked her face and barked with joy. Now, the last paragraph of the lesson, children. During the excitement, I helped the chopper to bring out the beds, toys, cushions, coats and bowls, none of which had been used. As the car moved away, Mrs. Pumphrey leaned out of the window. Tears shone in her eyes. Her lips trembled. Oh, Mr. Harriet, she cried. How can I ever thank you? This is a triumph of surgery. Now, the explanation, children. The favorite things of Tricky sent by Mrs. Pumphrey when he was admitted were again loaded into the car and Mrs. Pumphrey was really happy and didn't have words to thank Mr. Harriet. She only said that the doctor was victorious in his surgery. Thanks for listening, children.